a medical first in the fight against a disease which kills more young people than any other type of cancer. The treatment's happening right here in the West. One of the first patients is a teenager from Taunton. As our health correspondent Matthew Hill reports, the signs are so promising that young people are travelling here from around the world. James Willits is about to have a pioneering treatment on a brain tumour. The procedure is highly experimental. It's his last hope as conventional treatment has been exhausted. I was getting really bad headaches, but they weren't sure what it was. Trying all sorts of medication. Then finally they gave me a scan. And then that's when they discovered that it was a tumour. And then that's when I was rushed up, rushed off to Bristol Hospital for, for surgery. That first surgery removed most of the tumour. But brain cancers are notorious for growing back and traditional chemotherapy is ineffective at this stage. The brain has a natural barrier uh, from the bloodstream and that's to protect us against poisons in our system. But that barrier also acts to prevent drugs getting in to treat, the, treat brain tumours. Because this tumour is now growing uh, in quite deep parts of the brain, you either do nothing because there's nothing further we could do uh, with conventional treatment or we could try something novel. So that, that's what we are offering James uh, now, is, is a novel way of delivering drugs directly to the brain. This novel treatment involves 3D printed technology and robotics to implant catheters directly into James's tumour. When it was first explained to me, it just sounded more effective than all the other things that were being offered. And we're in a position now where the tumour is, is growing back, so we haven't really got to, too many options other than to go for this treatment. And um, I'm really um, optimistic about it. For James, it begins the day before with an MRI scan to create a digital 3D model of the tumour. A robotic arm then uses this model to guide Professor Gill as he implants four tiny tubes super accurately through James's brain into the tumour. For the first time ever, this new technology will allow chemotherapy drugs to be infused directly into the cancer. Well, this is a crucial moment for James where the four catheters are inserted into his tumour. Now, the robot's already been working with the CT scanner to insert the guide tubes with an accuracy of 0.2 of a millimetre. Okay, now, we need to get that down. Professor Gill has been developing this procedure since 2001 when he delivered drugs directly into the brains of Parkinson's sufferers. The effects of the disease were swiftly and dramatically reduced. <laughs> This little boy has travelled all the way to Bristol from Italy for treatment on his inoperable tumour. In all, nine children like him with brain cancers have already benefited from this technique. The scan, after this first infusion, shows the growth has shrunk, something that would never normally happen. So this is, this is the, the port we just uh, put in. For James, the operation is moving into its final stage. It's through this port that four needles go into individual channels and then can deliver to each catheter, so we can actually control the flow in each catheter. The hope is that procedures done now will form part of a study to see if they can change the way brain tumours are treated in the future. This is a drug that if we gave it systemically, uh, would only get a, a tiny proportion across the blood-brain barrier. The levels that we are now getting into James is 10 times higher than you could tolerate systemically. So if you were giving it conventionally, it would kill him? It would kill him, yeah. yeah. And how was this operation funded? This has been done through our own internal char charities. So uh, there is no funding for this type of surgery. And how, how much would this have cost, this procedure roughly? I would think it's somewhere in the region of about £35,000. There's a huge team of people that makes this possible. We've had to purchase a robot, we've had to purchase the O-arm, these are that's half a million pounds for the O-arm, uh, 300000 for this. 
in time, if this became uh, a normal process, obviously the costs would start to come down. This is very expensive. It's not funded by the NHS because it's novel. It hasn't been clinically tested. But testing new procedures involves risk, and many doctors fear they could be sued if anything goes wrong. The things we've had to do in terms of convincing the ethics committee and the medical directors and all these, all these people, everybody's in, you know, everybody knows what we're doing, the hospital take on responsibility for anything that might go amiss in, a, in what is an experimental uh, uh, setting. A few days after the operation and James is having his first infusion of chemotherapy directly into the tumour through the four implanted catheters. It'll feel a little bit funny and probably sound a bit unusual, but it shouldn't be painful. Ah, OK. It's the start of a long process of drug infusions, followed by more scans to assess their effect. OK, I'm just going to clip on once more. What we will plan to do is come back in about three to four weeks and repeat the infusions over two consecutive days again. Um, but before we do that, we'll get a follow-up MRI scan to see whether there's been any evidence of response to the chemotherapy. And that scan shows there's been a dramatic improvement. So what we've got here is um, an MRI scan of James's brain before the operation. Um, and this area here that's white um, is um, tumour and part of it. And um, if we go from that scan to today's scan, like that, you can see that the amount of white is actually a lot less than it was. So, for the first time, it seems there's evidence that brain tumours can be treated by direct infusion of chemotherapy. In fact, James is soon well enough for a visit to Renishaw in Gloucestershire. This is the technology company which pooled their expertise with Professor Gill to develop the robotic arm, its software and 3D printed instruments which made James' procedure possible. It's also a chance for him to find out exactly what's been going on inside his head. So in this tube there's four... Four small tubes. So this is a, a larger outer, outer tube, but within, within that larger tube there are four tiny, tiny tubes. I think I mentioned it's the size of the hair, the size of the hair, the tubes. Yeah, so the, the, the actual catheter tip itself has a diameter of 0 0.6 millimetres, yeah. Because I did try to see one time what it looked like, so I took a picture of this, tried to take a picture of the side of my head, and that's what I see it saw is these four, in the picture, yeah. is these four dangly yeah, things. It's January, and James is back to see how the treatment's progressing. Big toe up. Good. Can you push down against my hand? Hand down against my hand. OK. Good. Do you think I could see you walk? Good. And, and how do you feel? Do you feel steady or do you feel a yeah. bit... Uh, more right. bit? OK. Right. All right. The fact that he's continuing to show some improvement is reassuring. So I think we ought to think about reinfusing again in the next couple of weeks. How do you feel about that, James? Are you OK with that? Yeah. I think we have to expect that things will take a step backwards with another infusion, um, just like it did last time. Uh, but it looks as though things are, in the main, reversible. So few people have had this treatment, there are no certainties about the future. You know, I'm a person that asks lots of questions and they look at me and say, well, you've got to understand, we haven't done many of these, so we, we, we don't know. So, you know, they, they haven't got past history that they're looking at and comparing with. So where we are, he says, is it's stable, which um, is good. Push up against my thumbs. Good. It means James will have more infusions and more of their side effects. All right, now let's see how strong you are. Give me a big squeeze. It doesn't bother me too much, but it is quite annoying when, left, when my left-hand side gets knocked back a bit and I have to build it up again. Although there have been early successes, they still need to raise a million pounds to put this through a larger clinical trial to find the best drugs to use. But in the meantime, James is one of the first patients in the world who could help transform the way we treat this devastating disease. Well, that's just about it for tonight. But don't forget you can keep in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll be back on Friday.